The following is a special sports presentation from KWGN-TV, Denver's 2. Live from Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, this is the Colorado Rockies Dream Week Home Opener Special with Jim Conrad and Greg Mills. Brought to you in part by Taco Bell. Beat those burger blues. Make a run for the border. Home base with over 30,000 items at the guaranteed lowest prices. It's that simple. Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. Your local Amco Transmission Center, serving the Denver area and Northern Colorado for more than 25 years. And by RTV, introducing the new Rockies ride. Let Denver Stew and the RTV take you out to the ball game. We're live at Mile High Stadium as the Rockies get ready to take on the Expo. Hello again and welcome everybody to Mile High Stadium as the uh, Rockies get ready to take on the Montreal Expos in their first ever home game. 30 years of waiting is finally over and joining me uh, in our uh, broadcast booth here today is Sam Saplazio, the uh, longtime uh, coach, roving scout, uh, and uh, major league outfield scout for the California Angels. Sam, welcome. Jim, it's nice to be with you, especially to talk about Rockies baseball on opening day in Denver, Colorado. Can this be, uh, can, it, can you overemphasize the importance of this day? I can tell you this, Jim, that there's no word, and I was thinking if there was anything I could comment on as far as verbally describing the day, you can use every descriptive adjective known to man, uh, glorious, beautiful, wonderful, <laughs> and you'd never touch it. Yeah. It's outstanding. <laughs> Absolutely. we got a lot of things to uh, tell you about and show you before we uh, go to the game at 3 o'clock with Charlie Jones and Dwayne Kuyper live here on Channel 2. And to do that, we've got a lot of people around the stadium. First of all, we're going down to the field and check in with our Greg Mills. Greg? And Jim, I'm not going to describe this day. It's just fabulous. I think Sam will agree with there. Right now on the field, the Montreal Expos are taking infield practice. The Colorado Rockies wrapped up their brief uh, infield practice just a few minutes ago. 80,000 fans going to be here today, 80,000 VIPs. And checking in on some VIPs out in the parking lot of the special tent there is Steve Saunders. Steve? Well, Greg, just a whole lot of excitement out here. And you're right, I am next to what is called the VIP tent. About 1,500 people are inside the tent before they go into the game, join some 80,000 others. It includes a lot of the people, a lot of behind the scenes people who in fact made this day happen. Also some celebrities there, uh, John Elway among them. We hope to talk with him just a little later in the hour. Governor Romer there, we talked with him earlier. He had some thoughts about the days he had his doubts this day would ever happen when he was trying to get all those groups together to try and get that money up. So uh, a lot of interesting people here who have a lot of different thoughts on the, what everybody is now calling this glorious day and it truly is. Back to you, Jim Conrad. Thank you very much, Steve, and uh, we're looking forward to an outstanding hour telecast as we head you up to the ball game with Charlie Jones and Dwayne Kuyper, and we'll be checking in with those gentlemen in just a moment. But before we do that, today we're going to uh, give you a little bit of different look at some of the players on the Rocky squad as they talk candidly about some different things in their lives. And we're going to start with David Mead, who had a chance to be a football player, and he talks about that. I knew that uh, I threw a football like a baseball, and I had a... Uh, a long release. I didn't have the quick release, and I, I, I played on a team that was uh, had the leading rusher in AFC this year, so that helped me out. Barry Foster. So uh, heading off to him made me look a lot better. So I knew that baseball was going to be my ticket. Welcome back to Mile High Stadium and our pregame special as we go up to broadcast time at three o'clock here on Channel Two, and the two gentlemen who will be bringing you the game as they have already the. Uh, Pre the uh, season opener from New York. Charlie Jones and Dwayne Kuyper. And uh, gentlemen, we are happy to have you joining us again. And your thoughts on this game. Is there any way to estimate the importance of this game? Oh, I think the uh, probably the easiest way to say is that we're both in Texas. That's right. If we're in Texas, it must be important. It must be important. <laughs> it's a, it is opening night uh, for, the, for the Rockies. All right. Now, do you want to go ahead and say uh, how it stacks up as far as your history? Well, I'm not so sure that, that this date will ever be compared, uh, and it shouldn't be fairly compared to, to some of the things that I've been involved in. Uh, you know, I played in front of 75,000 in Cleveland, but, you know, that's just a normal home opener. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about a real special day here in Denver where this town, this area, the Rocky Mountains, have a new baseball team, and they get to see it for the first time. I mean, what could be better than that? 
and it, I think what we're seeing is, uh, to tag on to what you were saying, is that this is a game that uh, we will never again see in our lifetime. There will never be an expansion team anywhere in the world to receive this kind of immediate love from such a large area. And it's all being expressed today by more than 80,000 fans. You know, I left for the ballpark three hours and I was in a traffic jam three hours before broadcast time. And all of a sudden I said, should we leave five hours before the game? I mean, it's that kind of an atmosphere. And Jim, who knows how many people, if they could have gotten tickets right. to this game, who knows how many people would have showed up. And who knows how many people say they were here. That's right. All right. That's true. You know it's going to be a lot more than we're actually here 10 years from now. Absolutely. <laughs> Gentlemen, we'll be checking back with, in, uh, with you guys in just a little bit, and thanks for joining us. Well, uh, Sam, this there's no way we, uh, we've talked about it so many different ways, no way to talk about how important this is. But let's talk a little bit about the Rockies' perspective and what they want to accomplish in this first year. Jim, let me tell you something. I think Don Baylor, and under his leadership and guidance and his expertise and his strong demeanor and desire to win. Don Baylor is going to have that ball club playing to the best of their ability. You can't ask for any more than that. I think the Denver fans are going and the Rocky Mountain fans are going to see a club that is going to hustle and work 150% in every baseball game. I know in spring training you talk to players like Don Bichette and Gerald Clark and Alex Cole and what you have are people whose time has come. They've been in the shadow of stars like Dave Winfield and Robin Yance and others on clubs that they played with. And this is their day. They're out of those shadows. It's time for them to play. They step up now. And let's see, Dante, what you can do, Alex, and you too, Gerald Clark. You got to see this team in spring training. Uh, you were the, uh, the uh, coach. You took out the lineup and everything uh, down in spring training in Tucson. Uh, your thoughts when you saw them? Yes, I did. I'll tell you, I was really pleased to take out our first lineup uh, with California Angels when we played the Rockies down there visit with Don Baylor, and I was just in our dugout really thrilled to watch it actually happen for Colorado and for the Rocky Mountain West. The baseball team on the field, they hustle, they run. They're going to learn to hit, they're going to come along hitting with Amos Otis, Otis's help. But more than anything, they're going to work hard for you. I'm going to tell you, Dante Bichette, for instance, physically can hit a ball as far as anyone. Dante has as great a physical tools as anybody I've ever coached. I had him two years in Milwaukee. Right. Alex Cole can run, steal bases for you. Gerald Clark can run, steal bases, play some defense, and he's a hustler and a wonderful man. Eric Young is going to be a fellow that's going to be thrilling to watch because he'll steal the bases. He's happy every time he comes to the ballpark. <laughs> he loves baseball, and they're just going to be a thrilling baseball team. You were out here uh, when they were uh, just practicing yesterday and saw the enthusiasm with which the, the people here in Denver and around the region have greeted this team. It's almost overwhelming. Jim, it is. I, th I don't think I've ever, in 40 years of professional baseball, have I ever seen a batting practice where 20,000 people come out and watch you hit balls into the seat <laughs> and oohed and awed every time you hit a baseball. So I can say this, that the uh, excitement is here, the fan support is here, the ownership and Bill White from the National League, the president, Phyllis Collins from the National League, uh, Katie Feeney from the National League, they're all here today, and I'll tell you, it's, it is glorious, and it's a wonderful thing for Denver. You know who else is here with us today? It is Wade Phillips, the head coach of the Denver Broncos, and he is with Steve Saunders. You're right, Jim. With me right now is Wade Phillips, of course, from the Denver Broncos, but today I would guess a baseball fan. That's right, Colorado Rockies. <laughs> We're excited about it. It's, uh, it's a neat deal for Denver. I have a 14-year-old son that's ex excited about baseball, besides our whole family. So we're we're looking forward to it. Yeah, what is this like for you coming out to Mile High for a, a chance to enjoy a game? Now they're uh, rather, even though it's a different sport, not having It's to... a lot different. I don't I don't see many games from the stands, so it's uh, any kind of game really. So uh, it's it's a lot different for me. All right, uh, longtime baseball fan. What, what's your relationship to the game? Where have you always been football? No, I've always liked all sports, and uh, you know, baseball. I, I think I'm a normal kid in that. I grew up liking baseball and, and uh, following the players through, and, and I've always liked baseball. Right, so we can see you out here a lot this summer, probably? Well, I hope so. Right. You bet. In between spring uh, between That's summer right. camp and the rest That's of the That's right. Camp. I got a lot of work to do. Yeah, you do. All right, thank you very much. Wade Phillips see. joining us uh, right. to talk about not the Denver Broncos today, but the Colorado Rockies. Jim, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Steve. And uh, there are fans pouring in everywhere around Mile High Stadium. It is a carnival-like atmosphere. As you might guess, it's been a great day so far, and we haven't even gotten to the pregame introduction. It's going to be something. Don Baylor, of course, uh, will be uh, the manager of the Rockies in their first year. He'll also be joining us 
on the Don Baylor Show here on Channel 2. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that when we come back. But before we head to the break, let's uh, visit with one of the uh, players again. This time, Alex Cole, the Rocky center fielder. He says uh, to play pro ball, you need to be a little bit cocky, and he is. You have to have it. If you don't have it, then, uh, you know, when, when other players see that, you know, they see the competitiveness in you. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the way you go about, you know, go about your business, how you uh, handle yourself uh, on the field, and um, actually your peers respect that. There you see it, a live shot of Mile High Stadium as we get ready for the first ever baseball game, major league game to be played at Mile High Stadium, the Rockies against the Expos. And welcome back to our pregame show. I'm Jim Conrad, along with Sam Saplizio and Greg Mills and Steve Saunders, a cast of thousands here for you. And earlier, uh, Steve Saunders had a chance to chat with the governor of Colorado, Roy Roman. All right, so joining me now, Governor Roy Romer, very instrumental in this day finally coming to happen. What, what's your reaction here as we approach games? Well, I couldn't be more pleased. I tell you, the response of this community called Colorado to baseball is beyond all of our belief. You know, when we started this out months and months ago, uh, I never realized it would be this response, but I'm really pleased. And there was that time when uh, trying to get this ownership group together. You got a lot of people together in a closed door. Did you ever have any doubt that uh, you would be able to get get all the players in place? You bet I had doubts. We had to raise $120 million, and uh, that's a lot of money to raise. And I was doing calling, and uh, for example, Oren Benton, I found him in London and in a hotel. I said, we need $10 million. He says, I'll do it. That uh, Back in those days, I had some doubt whether we could raise the money, but we got it done. Really pleased. Down the road as the summer progresses, as these years progress, what's, what's this going to mean for Colorado? It's just going to mean, one, it's a good economic asset, but more than that, I think it's going to make this whole state feel good about itself. Uh, you, can't, you can't see this group come together like this without feeling like it helps us be more of a community. And I think that's the long-term game, is it brings us together as a community. Okay, quickly, uh, what, what have you been hearing as you've been walking around here today? Well, you know, uh, what I've been hearing is, uh, hey, how did we get here? You know, all the bumps, people were saying, isn't it great? Secondly, I've been hearing, uh, you know, when we're going to have the pennant. People are really competitive. They're anxious. The third, uh, what I've been hearing is how great Colorado is. People really feel good about themselves and about this place they live. Okay, thanks very much. All right, Governor Steve. Roman, very much one of the key players in making this entire day happen. And, uh, that, that's Governor Roy Romer speaking to us. Thank you very much, Steve, for that interview with the governor. And uh, he, of course, was one of the key players in bringing baseball here. It's been a great day so far, and it's, continue, it's going to continue to be that way. And our Greg Mills is down on the first baseline, soaking up all of the sunshine and the atmosphere. Greg? And uh, some other people who uh, helped bring uh, the baseball, the money people, the folks who own the team, are off to my left, uh, out of camera range right now. We're going to hit them up for a loan, hopefully, here in a little while. Hey, you and I were both here yesterday to watch the Rockies workout. We were here with about uh, five or 10,000 people. And uh, you had a chance to visit with Don Baylor right in this field. and I know uh, we're looking forward to it. We hope you are. Oh, without a doubt. I, I've always kind of wanted to do something a little different. And uh, uh, here I am in, in Denver uh, managing the Rockies. That's very different for me. But just to give the fans uh, some of the insight of, of what goes on, not just the X's and O's or the cutoffs and the relays. I want to give something, uh, a little insight about what we do every day and how we go about it, how we make some of the decisions that we make. Uh, as fans, you say, how can that guy be playing right field? And so I understand those things, but I'd like to uh, really explain to the fans how we arrive at that decision. Speaking of insight, uh, why don't you give us some into games one and game uh, two in uh, New York? Well, I, I believe the game one was a, a real a tough loss for us. Uh, we really didn't get anything going, but when you face Dwight Gooden, the reports that we got that he did not throw well, I know his last time out, uh, he popped a couple of fastballs in the 90s <laughs> against us, uh, so I don't know. That was just a, a holdback, but w we had a chance late in the ball game. Uh, everyone points at the Galarraga mistake. Um, if that base running blunder is done in the second or third inning, you, you never think about it. 
but you're always looking to get the tie and run at the plate and he was at 26 out so he ran into the 26 out so now we have one out left and Gerald Clark at the, if he hits a two run homer we still lose three to two so that was a tough loss for us. Uh, the second day, we just played poorly. We, we didn't pitch well, we didn't defend well. And when you have uh, Saber Hagen, uh, you spot him three or four runs, you're not gonna beat him. Let's talk about a little bit about tomorrow, uh, what the players are expecting, what you're expecting. It's just gonna be unbelievable. Well, I believe uh, uh, with the parade, uh, guys uh, had a preview. Uh, then we had a sponsors thing, they had another preview, but. I've told them all spring, you will not believe when you walk into that stadium uh, opening day in Denver, 25 guys are lucky enough to make this ball club. You know, the, the goosebumps that you'll feel, uh, I guarantee you, I, I can't wait either, and I know the players are looking forward to it. All right, Don, we appreciate it. A little preview of the Don Baylor Show that begins April 25th right here on Denver's 2. And we are all looking forward to that. We are all looking forward to that uh, Don Baylor Show debut right here on the 25th. You know, 80,000 people going to crowd here in the Mile High Stadium today for the big Major League record for an opening day crowd. Some people, though, are still out in the parking lot trying to get a ticket. And one of those people is with Steve Saunders right now. Steve? You're right. With me right now is Jim Amato, actually from Cincinnati. And he has been down here how long? About 10 minutes? About 10 minutes. All right, tell me your experience. Any, any sellers at this point? No, no sellers at this point. No, no bites, no nothing. Too early. Too early. You've done this before, and obviously yeah. not for an, an all-time opening game. Right. In Cincinnati. in Cincinnati, I've gone to a couple opening day games, and last year, somebody came up and gave me a ticket. They were very kind and just gave me a ticket for opening day. So you never know what happens out here. Okay, how much are you willing to go? $20. $20, do you think that's going to work? Yeah, it might, yeah. It's worth a try. It's worth a try, so. Okay, thank you very much. This is Jim thank Amato you. from Cincinnati, one of the people out here still looking for a ticket. I can tell you that uh, the fans now are really making their way into the park because a lot of tailgaters have been out here since 11. They are now moving in force into the stadium. Back to you, Jim, I believe. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, it is an amazing crowd filing in here to Mile High Stadium, a record 80,000 plus. Uh, it's going to be something. And you uh, had a chance to uh, coach with Don Baylor in, in his first uh, chance to do that. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, let me tell you something, Jim. I may be the only person in the park who has coached with Don Baylor under, here, under his real managerial debut in Milwaukee two years ago when Tom Treblehorn was a manager. We were in uh, Seattle and we got into a scuffle up there with Jim Lefebvre and his team and Tom Treblehorn was suspended for four days later on in the season. So Don Baylor was appointed manager. So for four days against the Chicago White Sox, Don <laughs> Baylor was a manager. I was his bullpen coach and I got to tell you, he was in command from day one. <laughs> well, we've seen that already. Uh, he's a guy that really comes in and knows exactly what, what he wants to do and takes charge. Donnie really does. I'll tell you, he's got a, a mindset that is a mindset for winning, and he won't take anything less than you're doing 100%, giving 100%. And in the bullpen, he got the pitchers up when they had to, and he was immediately in control, and that's what you have to say about Don Baylor. He knows where he's going and how he's going to get there. When you said we were in a scuffle up in Seattle, I can't imagine you were actually in the middle of that? Oh, I was just watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're, we're looking forward to, to seeing a lot more of Don Baylor uh, as he uh, coaches and or manages his first uh, major league team here with the Colorado Rockies this season. It's going to be an outstanding year. We, uh, we know uh, just from what we've seen so far. As we uh, go to our next break, so let's uh, check in with Gerald Clark. Now, Gerald was very active with kids in San Diego last year, and he plans on doing the same this year here in Denver, and here's why. Kids, there isn't much they can do for themselves. They depend on us. As, you know, I have a young daughter. She's eight and a half months old. So she depends on me and my wife to do things for us, for her. So kids are that way too. They look up to uh, grown-ups, and especially because of the profession that we're in, they look up to us and they respect us because of what we do. And they even respect us more if we're nice people and we're kind to them. The fans really starting to get into it now as the pregame ceremonies begin to get underway out on the field here at Mile High Stadium. And what a glorious day it is. And, you know, uh, Sam, you were saying in all your years of baseball, even going all the way back to your days with the Yankees, you've never seen anything like this. Never have, Jim. In 40 years of professional baseball, and I've been in and out of uh, in it for 40 years, I can say that there's never been a more glorious day than this day, this blue sky, and this crowd in this stadium. And I can tell you, it's gorgeous. There are goosebumps all over uh, on the backs of our necks. Uh, I can guarantee you that. And let's go down to another guy with goosebumps, Craig Mills. <laughs> 
and I have some goosebumps too. I'm not going to show them to you. Down here on the field, they are introducing some dignitaries. And I'll tell you, there's one guy here today for the game between Montreal and uh, the Colorado Rockies who uh, has a special tie to Denver. He is a former Denver Bears manager. Now he's managing the Montreal Expos. He's named Felipe Alou, and he is so happy to be back here to be sharing in this opening home game for the Colorado Rockies back in kind of his adopted hometown. This has got to be very special for you, having been a manager in this ballpark with the Denver Bears, now to be coming back for Denver's opener in Major League Baseball. Yeah, it is uh, great about the crowd that uh, we are going to get today, but even if we didn't have anybody, even if we didn't have a, a ball again today, this is a special city for me, the way the people show me their love and their respect. And I'm always looking forward to being here. You had to be very happy then to see Denver get a major league team. I surely did. When I heard the news, I jumped up. Uh, I knew this city deserved, deserved a major league club for many years, but I'm glad it happened, and I'm glad that I'm here to see it the first day. And uh, there was a lot of speculation, as you might recall, when we first got the team, that Felipe Alou might be the candidate to be the manager, but it didn't work out. Things have worked out well for him in Montreal, and the Rockies, of course, very happy to have Don Baylor. Jim, back to you. Well, these are two young managers uh, who are getting a chance. Felipe Alou has already proven last year that he can really manage in the big leagues, and Don Baylor is getting his opportunity this year with the Colorado Rockies. Uh, it's going to be a glorious day, and it's, glad, it's good to see Felipe Alou, who had such an outstanding run here with the Denver Bears, back managing in Mile High Stadium. As we go to our next break, we want to check in with today's uh, pitcher for the Colorado Rockies, Bryn Smith, who gets to start the home opener. He says baseball remains a kid's game, no matter how old you are. Uh, I always had fun playing it when I was growing up, and I'm fortunate to be able to still play the game that, I, that I've loved and enjoy to play. So I, I try to make it as fun as I can uh, just to enjoy it. I, I think if you enjoy your work, then you're, you're definitely going to get a lot, a lot more out of that. And uh, the less you have to make yourself enjoy it, uh, the better off you're going to be. So I, I look forward to coming to the ballpark every day. Stadium in our pregame special. I'm Jim Conrad along with Sam Suplesio, Greg Mills, and Steve Saunders. And of course, the two gentlemen who will be calling today's game coming up here on Channel 2 at 3 o'clock Charlie Jones and Dwayne Kuyper. And gentlemen, uh, you were down on the field uh, before the game chatting with the coaches and players. How are they handling all this hoopla? An entirely different feel than, uh, than in preseason and, and also an entirely different feel than we saw in Shea Stadium on Monday. I, uh, the players, in a word, were edgy. Uh, they didn't want to talk to anybody. They wanted everybody to get back. They didn't want it to be crowded. They didn't want to ask questions. They were focused, concentrated, uh, much more so than Monday. Well, I think a lot of things have happened. You know, they, they got off the airplane uh, on Wednesday night, mm -hmm. and very early the next morning, which was yesterday, they had to be at the ballpark to, to get ready to, to be involved in the parade. Right. And then they had a luncheon, and then they had the workout. And I think they want to play. Mm -hmm. I think at some point, this is all wonderful and the experience yeah. is grand, but they wear a uniform and they want to play baseball. And, and it's been difficult for them, uh, you know, to focus on that. And I think they're ready. And the moment is here. It is now time to play ball. All right, gentlemen, uh, we love those tuxedos. Have a good call of the game today. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And uh, we were talking uh, with, or we saw, uh, saw Bryn Smith before we went to the commercial, uh, Sam. Uh, this guy is one of the uh, cornerstones of this Rockies pitching staff, and maybe the best cornerstone, though, is the pitching coach, Larry Bernard. I have to say uh, you hit it right on the head, Jim, because we have some good young arms, good young pitchers, and in spring training you hear the, the peer group of pitching coach Larry Bernard, all the other pitching coaches in the major leagues, and our manager, Buck Rogers, out there with the California Angels. I'll say this, that Buck thinks the world of Larry Bernard and his ability to coach pitchers. His knowledge of pitching is solid. His ability to convey his knowledge to the young pitchers and get them to understand how you pitch, how you set up a hitter, what pitches to throw, how to hold your best pitch back. He does it great. And certainly for an expansion team, 
uh, getting your pitching staff together and getting that going early on is really a key. No question about it. Without the pitching, you've got, you can't stay in a ball game, and the young pitchers have to have a man building their confidence, working on their tools, and getting the job done with them. And Larry Bernard is that man. Let me ask you about this. How important is Joe Girardi going to be behind the plate with this young pitching staff? Outstandingly important. As you know, Jim, when the draft came, Joe Girardi is a Northwestern honor student in, in college, a good mind, a good head. He will handle these young fellows, and he calls a great game. I have never seen Mile High Stadium look more festive, uh, more decked out than it is today. But it's a, it's a baseball park of, when it's moved out of its football configuration. How difficult is this park, considering it's got the huge center and right field? Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to take a, it'll be a real test of Alex Cole and all center fielders to see who can cover the <laughs> outfield in, in this stadium. It's going to tell you how good are the outfielders. This is where a good outfield instructor really is needed. In fact, they don't need a, a lawnmower to cut the outfield grass here. It's so big, they really uh, need a combine <laughs> to cut the grass here. No question about it, Jim. It's a huge facility. But when you wheel in the left field stands and make it a baseball field, it looks much better than a football field. <laughs> well, we're uh, moving along here in our hour special, and uh, we want to uh, give you more flavor of what's going on. So let's go to Steve Saunders, who is outside the ballpark. Steve? I'm outside the ballpark with a very little Rockies fan and a, a mother of a little Rockies fan. Your name again? Julie Grable. Julie and Jessica is with you, and I don't know how well you can suck this out, but Jessica is decked out if you want to hold her up just a little bit in uh, just about every Rockies baby outfit you can imagine. It says first homestand ever here. I was there. Jessica is there. All the ro appropriate colors, of course. Why, why bring her along today? Obviously, she's not going to remember this, but this is one of these stories you can tell her someday. Well, this is uh, her father's idea because she or he wanted her to be able to tell her grandchildren that she went to the first Rockies game ever played in Colorado. Okay, so who else is here with you besides Jessica? Your husband? My husband, my mother and father-in-law, brother and sister-in-law, their two children, lots of friends. Okay, so this is one of those days that, uh, how long have you guys been planning, looking forward to this? Oh, from the beginning. Okay. Thank you very much for talking with Thank us. Thank you. you, Jessica, for making a TV appearance today, attending the Rockies' first ever game. So this is just an example of some of the people down here. I can also tell you, earlier today we ran into a little boy who is going to be three weeks old tomorrow same story basically says someday he's gonna be able to say yeah I was there so uh, that's just a flavor of what's going on down here thank you very much Steve and the Colorado Rockies are now being introduced for the first time ever here at Mile High Stadium down on the field and that's the response that you're hearing from this crowd here at Mile High Stadium and it is something it is really fantastic Jim I can't believe the excitement it, it just builds and builds and it's getting more and more and with each guy, there's a new eruption of applause as they've started down the lineup, starting with Eric Young, who will be the leadoff hitter. Boy, he's got to have chills being the first guy to step in uh, when uh, the Rockies get a chance to bat. I think the hitters are going to have a hard time, you know, concentrating on their hitting, and the outfielder is going to have a tough time hearing the sound of the ball hitting the bat because of the noise. But again, great. Outstanding uh, that uh, Eric Young has come over from the, uh, the uh, Dodgers. Here's a guy that uh, they really didn't know what they were getting, but he's turned out to be a very much of a surprise and a very good surprise. Jim, I saw Eric Young last year in Albuquerque play against our Edmonton club, our Triple-A team. And Eric Young, to me, besides Damian Easley, the Angel second baseman, was the finest minor league baseball player I saw last year. He can do it all. Let's slip in a uh, quick plug for your California Angels Club. They're off to a pretty good start. J.T. Snow, uh, Doug DeCharcina, those guys are playing pretty well. You know, Jim, thank you very much for letting me talk about it. I'll say this. We're young, we're athletic, and we're going to make mistakes, but the desire and the heart is there. The rest will take care of itself. Uh, and you got a guy who uh, every uh, fourth or fifth day can help you a lot in Langston, too. Mark Langston, uh, 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 Finley, our Chuck Finley, yep. our big left-hander. We're going to be all right. We'll play hard. We'll win our share. All right, let's get, we've done enough on the Angels. Let's get back to the Rockies. <laughs> Talk about the, this matchup today. They are going against a very good baseball team in the Montreal Expo. I don't think there's any question about it. We'll find out today just how good our pitching is because the Expos bring in a real offensive baseball team. I know Frankie Bullock, the third baseman, is a good power hitter, the Shields, and all the rest of that ball club. So it's going to be a real test of the Rockies pitching today to see just how they handle the power hitters and what they can do. Uh, they also have a guy who's very interesting who really wanted to grow up to be a hockey player, but he never did. Larry Walker, who's from Canada. Yes, Larry, Wa and Larry Walker to hit the ball out of sight. Absolutely. Maybe some of their left-handed hitters, we can take the fly ball away from them in right field here. 
We've got lots, lots more to tell you about here on our opening uh, opening day special, I should say, our pregame special, as we lead up to the live telecast of the game. And we'll be doing that a little more when we come back. But before we go to break, let's talk to Eric Young, the fine second baseman who we were talking about moments, moments ago. He's a graduate of Rutgers University with a business degree, and he hopes young people realize the importance of staying in school. Well, basically, not to put uh, all the eggs in one basket, uh, I think education should be far more important than playing uh, athletics because at any time, uh, someone can take the ball away from you, but no one can take the knowledge that you've gained in the classroom from you. There's the huge crowd as they cheer the 1993 Colorado Rockies, the first ever here at Mile High Stadium. They have just been introduced. Steve Saunders is down amongst the, uh, the crowd still filing in, and let's go to him right now and check in with him about uh, what's going on out there. Well, Jim, we are in the south stands, and I can tell you that the fans picking up their step a little bit as they hear the crowds from out here in this parking lot. What's going on inside? Everybody, of course, wanting to get inside. Now, just uh, as the gates opened, just a little bit after noon, we were inside along with uh, the Rocky Senior Vice President, Bernie Mullins. And he talked about what this day means for him, the culmination of a lot of hard work by an awful lot of people. <laughs> uh, it's a day that we've worked for, for for two years, for many of us, for over a year, for the majority of the front office and the organization, and for the people, that, uh, the fans and the people that have worked to bring baseball here today, they've worked for three years. Nice. It's uh, just a tremendous culmination of phenomenal amount of effort and joy and love and passion for baseball. So what does he mean? We feel a lot of that passion for baseball out here, as I said. A lot of people picking up their step, wanting to get inside, see that first pitch. We go now back to Jim Conrad. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Steve. The crowd continuing to pour into Mile High Stadium here. We're going to take a quick break and uh, then come back with more. But before we go, let's check in with David Mead, who hopes that Rocky fans give him time to prove himself as a pitcher. You know, I pitched 23, 24 big league innings, and... Uh, they're talking about me being a household name out there. I think that's a little premature as far as some of that goes. But uh, I'd say most of that has to go with the number one pick status and uh, being the new team out there. But, uh, you know, hopefully I can live up to expectations. And uh, I'm not looking on a one game or one year deal. Uh, I'm looking over a, a period of a career. Welcome back to our live coverage on our pregame show leading up to the first ever Rockies game at Mile High Stadium. And we are about ready uh, for the national anthem. Uh, we'll be going to that in just a moment. But we just heard the Canadian national anthem, anthem and uh, it's just thrilling. It really is, Jim. I'll tell you, the noise in the background, the reaction of the crowd sends goosebumps, as you said earlier, up and down your spine. It's very emotional. It and is. they're reacting to everything that happens. It's uh, anything that's announced, they go nuts over. Every move on the field. It Absolutely. Really I think we're ready. Here's the national anthem. for baseball and 
this day wouldn't really have happened if it hadn't been for a lot of people coming together to bring baseball here. And I know what, there's a group that you really want to mention. No question about it, Jim. I would like to take a moment and quickly recognize and thank the members of the Colorado Baseball Commission, whose efforts giving 400 programs in and around the Metro Denver area, selling baseball for two and a half years to the public to turn around that 70-30 against the stadium to make it 55-45 for the stadium. The Baseball Commission, the members of the House and the Senate in our state capitol who had the wisdom to pass the legislation to form the groups, to form the commission, to bring baseball here. And last but not least, the people who put it over the top, the fans, the citizens, the people in the stadium today, in and around Metro Denver and up and down the Rocky Mountain region, you did a job, nice going, this is your baseball team. And we echo those sentiments, absolutely. Let's take another time out, but before we get to the break, Let's check in with the uh, left fielder for the Colorado Rockies, Gerald Clark. He hopes that Mile High is ready for Major League Ball, but he also feels that uh, there shouldn't be an excuse for any poor play on the Rockies' part. I've heard rumors about, uh, you know, about the ballpark, about the altitude, um, and to me, if it's going to help, it's great. But to me, it's immaterial because you have to play your game and you can't let your game slip in any way. You can't let the conditions of the field or, or the weather, you know, dictate what you're going to do on the field. Sharon Davis, what do you... ...who was going to throw out the first pitch. It uh, looked like uh, some youngsters did. It was. In fact, it was the young lady who's standing right next to me. What is your name? Connie Cetus. Connie, how did you become the person who threw out the very first pitch for the Rockies' very first home game? Um, all the representatives and everything put ha uh, the school's names in the hats, and they do... Uh, school and it was my school, Spangler Elementary, and the principal had to get a meeting with all the teachers to decide what student would go to the game. And how did you get that honor? They chose me because <laughs> right, I'm involved with sports and I'm a good student and I have a very good attitude. And Connie, what a thrill it had to be for you to throw out the very first pitch, huh? Yes, it was. Are you going to save the ball? Of course. <laughs> I thought so. Get that thing autographed. Connie, congratulations to you. And that's the person. We were wondering all along who was going to be throwing out the very first pitch. The ceremony, it has been something to be here on the field, Jim. You were describing what was happening as the players were introduced. Biggest hand, I think, went to uh, Dante Bichette. He seems to have uh, acquired quite the fan club, maybe because he hit the first home run. I don't know. We're also trying to get Bill White. He was on the mound with Connie uh, when they were throwing out the first pitch. Bill White, the National League president, is here today to uh, take in the Rockies' very first game. And uh, Dante Bichette, as I mentioned, very popular player. And he told me before the game that uh, he was experiencing a little bit of butterflies. Some butterflies going right now? Uh, a little bit. I think you're only human to have them right now. Um, I think they'll get a, they'll, they'll be a little bit more when, when the game starts. But uh, after the first pitch and the first swing, and I get that out of the way, it, it'll be business as usual. What about right field? Is there a problem out there for you? Well, the, the, the field's a little bit uh, defaced a little bit. It looks like a bad haircut, I keep saying. But uh, it plays fine. It, it'll be fine. It just looks kind of bad. Okay. Dante, thank you. Looks like a bad haircut huh? out in right field, but Dante Bichette says it'll be okay. Jim, back to you. Thank you very much, Greg. So we now know the identity of the uh, person who threw out the first pitch. They really kept it a secret here. As we go to break, let's check in with Bryn Smith. Uh, of course, he played for the Montreal Expos, and they are the uh, opponents here today for the first game at Mile High Stadium. And he says that fans view the game differently in Canada than they do here in Colorado. The biggest problem I felt was trying to judge people or, or judge the Canadian people on their, uh, their abilities to play baseball, which... Uh, which I wasn't trying to do to, to get on anybody or anything like that. But in noticing uh, the difference in the fans and the way the game is treated up there, I, I think they look at it more as an entertainment maybe than a sport. Uh, I don't think they really realize how tough it is to hit a baseball. We're just moments away from the Expos against the Rockies here at Mile High Stadium, and let's go down to Greg Mills on the field. Greg? Jim is amazing on this opening day. They got all the festivities out of the way quickly. Now the players are just waiting for the, for the uh, game to begin. Most of the players are in the dugout. Freddie Benavides and Eric Young are behind me. They are practicing and getting ready for the ball game. Steve Saunders, what's happening outside? I'll tell you, Greg, absolutely electric out here as the fans continue to come in. Of course, there was some concern about how all these people were going to get in here, but so many of these people came in early. It doesn't seem to be that much of a problem. Again, this is going to be a record crowd, more than 80,000 people, the largest ever to see a Major League home opener. Every, eight, every one of those 80,000 just thrilled to be out here. Back to you, Jim. Conrad. 
And we are still pinching ourselves uh, here, Sam Saplizio, because uh, it's hard to believe that this day is actually here. It really is, Jim. And now that it is here and we're about to wrap up our show, may I say to you this, that there's only one thing left for us to get done today, and it is to establish the record for the most number of people at an opening day in the major leagues, and we're about to get that done. That's going to be amazing. This team, I know uh, they start, they're starting to feel a little pressure to win. Uh, what a great day to get that first win right here in front of these 80,000 plus. I think that's exactly well said. Can't say any more than that. I'm ready for the ball game, Jim, and I know you are. I think we all are. It's going to be outstanding. Be sure and stay with us because we've got lots more coming up here on Channel 2. Of course, the ball game coming up here in just moments uh, live from uh, Mile High Stadium with Charlie Jones and Dwayne Kuyper. And of course, we'll be back at 9 o'clock tonight on Channel 2 News to wrap up all of the day's events surrounding this special opening day for the Colorado Rockies as they come home after 30 years of frustration here in Colorado trying to bring Major League Baseball. It has finally arrived. The Rockies will play against the Montreal Expos this afternoon, and that's coming up in just moments. Thanks for joining us. For uh, Sam Saplizio, for Greg Mills and Steve Saunders, thanks for joining us. Coming up next, stay tuned. It's the Colorado Rockies against the Montreal Expos live from Mile High Stadium right here on 